So here's a quick little video on how to apply an image to a wall with perspective and a drop shadow to make it look realistic. This little demo is for Jeff Lubin who sent this image to me of the image and the room that he wants to put it into. It's a PSD and I have the image on a layer in this room. So I want to show you how to correct the perspective and then put a drop shadow. So first thing I want to do is define the shape that it should be to be the proper perspective. I am going to go in here to the perspective crop tool and I'm just going to drag corner to corner and then I'm going to grab this top corner and pull it down until I have the angle of the wall design. There you go. So then I need to do the bottom as well. So I'm going to grab the bottom handle down here and drag it up. Now what do I do on this end? I'm going to match the angle of the little uh, bench at the end of the bed. Now look at the handle where it is over here on the left. I also need to be conscious of this angle because it does make a difference. So I'm going to make sure that my end is also at the proper perspective following the lines of the wall. So there is my angle. Now all I need to do is to find where it ought to fall in that perspective. So my top handle, if I grab the middle of it, it will allow me to pull the whole line down to the corner of the picture. Then if I go to the bottom, if I grab the middle handle, look how this changes and it keeps the same perspective. It's almost like a, um, a windshield wiper or something. So you can be guaranteed that no matter where you put it, it will stay in the right perspective. It's pretty cool. So I'm gonna bring this up to right there. So I want to mark the two corners that are where they're supposed to be and note that I need to change the other two corners. So I'm going to use my guides. Now I have to have the rulers showing. So Controller Command R shows your rulers. You click on the white ruler and drag a guide over. So I'm just going to put a, a guide. Oh, it disappeared. That means my guides are not showing. So command or control semicolon shows the guides. Then I'm going to drag the other guide over to the far edge of the picture. Now I need to mark where that point ought to be. This one's fine and this one's fine. It's the top right and the lower left that need to be changed. So I'm going to drag a guide down to that intersection right there where this picture should be. Drag another guide to the bottom intersection right there. Nope, it won't let me. I need to go a little bit zoomed in so I have a little bit more control. I'm going to drag that guide in to that corner where the picture ought to be. So now I'm going to escape out of my perspective crop and that's why I drew the guides in there because once you escape out of that you can't see the lines anymore. Then I'm going to do Controller Command T to transform. Now if you want this to distort you have to hold the Control or Command key. So Command and drag this corner up to that point and drag this corner down to that point. And there we go. Now it's in perfect perspective. Now I just want my guides to go away so I can either hide them with controller command semicolon or you can go to view clear guides. There you go. So now it's in perspective much better but it still looks fake because there's no shadow right? So we're just going to add a shadow. Double click on there and click drop shadow. So, wow, that's all wrong, right? So first thing I'm going to do is change the angle to the direction of the light. The light's coming actually from a little below it, from the window. So that's the right angle. And let's see our distance a little farther. The black does not work. Look at the shadow here of the molding. It's actually this gold color. So I'm going to change my black. I'm going to click over here on a rich gold of the curtain and click OK. That looks much better. Now, I want it to be softer, so I'm going to take my size up a little bit, and the distance, that's probably pretty good. It looks like it's a pretty thick frame, so of course it'll fall a little farther if it's a thicker frame. There you go. And then the spread, of course, it makes it a harder edge. I like it kind of soft. That looks pretty good right there, and I can still modify it a little bit, but I'm going to go with that, and I'm going to say OK. Now, that's probably okay, close enough, but just as a little bonus, just in case 
you want it to look a little different or maybe look like the top is leaning out a little farther than the bottom, anything like that, you can drop the shadow off. Here's what you do. On the layer, over here, you're going to click the little arrow down next to the FX so you can see effects. Then, with the word effects showing, you're going to right click on it and go to the bottom section and hit create layer. That will give you a warning, just say OK. And what it did is it dropped off that layer as a separate, or dropped off that shadow as a separate layer. So now it's a separate layer. So if I wanted to change the perspective of it or feather it off or hide part of it with a mask, all I have to do is select that layer, transform, and I can actually distort it by holding uh, command and stretch it out or bring it in closer. Like if I want it to look like it's farther out from the top than the bottom, I can do that. If I want to bring it out just a little bit on the bottom or whatever I want to do, I can make it look exactly the way I want. So let's see, I'm gonna bring this back in where it was, right about there, maybe a little less. There we go. And I am happy with that. I think it looks totally realistic. So there you go, quick little demo.